Hello, it's me, and we interrupt our regularly scheduled broadcasting because of uh, some urgent um, questions and requests. From time to time, I get some questions regarding different dilemmas or solve situations on puzzles. Sometimes things weren't quite as clear during the tutorial or something hasn't really been addressed, or there was a tutorial and it wasn't really gone over. So I have had a couple of them so what I'm going to do is, uh, from time to time, just go through some uh, answers to questions on, on various puzzles. Now, if you wanted to post a question and you'd like me to go through it and do a quick video of it because it's hard to kind of explain, do me a favor, if you can provide a picture with it, I'll give you a link to my email, which will be at superantoniovivaldi at gmail.com. If you can enclose a picture with as much description as you can, then I'd, I'd be happy to go through how to solve it, how to get through it. Anyway, the, the first one comes from Rama, who had a question regarding the case cube. Uh, what he says is sometimes only one edge doesn't twist as shown and he showed a picture uh, Where you can see it like this by scrambling the cube completely can be solved Is there any method to twist only one edge? Please help me. So no worries Rama um, I did point you towards the tutorial of how to solve this But in addition to that I figured I'd go through your exact picture just for the sake of brevity if you don't want to go through the entire tutorial So what's happening with this case and why did this happen? Well the way to approach um, puzzles, the, the way to approach something like this is to first ask why did this happen? Now this looks like a parody, right? A parody in which um, something should not have happened quite that way. Like you see this, if everything else is fine, then um, then really this shouldn't shouldn't occur. You shouldn't have one that's flipped that goes against the law of, of cubes. You can rotate one 90 degrees and another 90 degrees. So you can rotate two, but not just one. So it would appear that that's what happened with this. Just one was rotated 90 degrees. Well, it's impossible to do that. The only way to do that is to have a configuration like this, where this is also rotated 90 degrees. This is completely kosher, that's completely fine. So what happened here is that's exactly what happened. This is the same configure, configuration as this. Notice I put the red one and the white one up. The color configuration is different from the standard Rubik's Cube. What happened is that this here is actually an edge. It looks like a center, but it's not. The center is this piece. So when we turn it, this is an edge over here, and we turn about this axis, you can see this is actually the center piece. This is a very fun puzzle, by the way. You get every kind of equivocations and false parodies. So I don't really call this a parody per se because a parody is something that happens as you're reducing a puzzle from one parody type to another. So this isn't a parody problem. This is what I call false equivocation. Because what happened is that this edge piece is the same no matter how you rotate it. So that when you solve the puzzle, you had it rotated wrong, but you never knew it. You had it in this configuration, but because this has two colors, you could easily recognize it and never cause that to happen. Here, you run the risk of that. So this piece is the same as this piece, but because it's the same shape, it shows what I call rotational symmetry. Um, you can end up with what I call rotational equi equivalency. Rotational equivalency just means that you can rotate it and you think that it's the same. It actually looks the same because it's equivalent when you rotate it one direction versus another, when you rotate it 90 degrees, or rather 180 degrees. If you rotate this 180 degrees, you'd know it. Here, you don't. So you have what I would call rotational equivalency causing false equivocation that you won't know until you hit the last layer. So how do I get out of this? Well, the key to getting out of this is to first recognize that there exists edges here that can be rotated 180 degrees off and you wouldn't know it. This one, um, these are also edges and this can also be rotated 180 degrees. So that's the challenge of this puzzle. To solve this, well, it's pretty easy to figure out here, what we're gonna do is simply rotate that. I'm gonna do the algorithm to put this up here. So we're gonna swap this down here by doing UR, UI, RI, UI, FI, UF. We're now gonna wheel this around because now this is up top over here. Wheel it around until it's back here again, and I'll just do that same algorithm. U, R, U, I, R, I. U, I, F, I, U, F. That puts this back, and now this has been reconfigured. What you're gonna do is just do another U, I, whoop, just do another to U, that'll get all of your edges back, and now it's a matter of just permuting your corners in the way that you know. There's gonna be one corner that's in, and that's gonna be this guy over here. So I'm just gonna turn this over here, do my corner permutation, where this stays where it is, and I'm gonna keep doing my corner permutation algorithm until these rotate around. And all it's gonna take is one. This will come to here, this will come to here, and this will come to here. U, R, U, I, L, I, U, R, I, U, I, L. 
These two will be in. These are also in. They just have to be rotated. To rotate them, you just do R-I-D-I-R-D as your final algorithm. So you set this up here. R-I-D-I-R-D, R-I-D-I-R-D. This is in. Put this one next in line. R-I-D-A-R-D. And you keep doing that. And then all is right with the world. Now, we're going to do exactly the same thing here. The tricky thing about this is, of course, the, um, uh, the perspective. So remember, this is our edge. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this, we're going to move it up to here the same way. So it's going to be U, R, U, I, R, I, U, I, F, I, U, F. Okay, this is now sticking out down here. Now we're gonna take this piece here, we're gonna keep wheeling it around until we're right back. We're now gonna put it down again, but this time it's gonna be rotated 180 degrees from where it was before, and that will place this puzzle back in the proper, um, um, the proper calibration. U, R, U, I, R, I, U, I, F, I, U, F, and just to show that there's absolutely no difference in this puzzle as in this, you just do another 2U to get it back. These are all back. There's going to be one that's going to be properly placed. That's going to be this guy here. So uh, just remember, these are corners now. This corner is properly placed. So we're going to do the same algorithm. This will come here, this will come here, and this will come here. That's going to be U, R, U, I, L, I, U, R, I, U, I, L. So needless to say, I do assume knowledge of how to solve this puzzle first. So these guys are all in, and just like we have with these two out, these two are out, these two uh, corners, so we just do R, I, D, I, R, D, R, I, D, I, R, D. Wheel this one around, do it again, R, I, D, I, R, D, R, I forgot how much this puzzle catches. D, I, R, D, R, I, D, I, R, D, and what's more, R, I, D, I, R, D. and the puzzle is solved. So there it is. So that's how you get out of that dilemma. The whole key to that, the moral of that story, is that you had a false equivocation. Just be aware when you have a mod, and there's a variety of different mods that are out there, and I get a lot of questions with a very similar concept, is that something got rotated and it had rotational equivalency, so you committed the fallacy of false equivocation, giving an apparent parity, which isn't really a parity, it just means that you twisted um, one piece wrong. So there you go, Rama, hopefully that helped. Okay, the next question comes from Eric Janto. Eric writes, uh, that's my dilemma, it's the third layer, the first and second layers are already done. And basically what he shows, um, as you can see, is uh, there's a problem with uh, two of the edges, uh, two of the edges are in and two of the edges are out. Um, so here is the closest representation that I can make with this. Um, I actually put it in about as good a configuration or as close a configuration. He's got this long piece over here, this over here. These are in the right position and um, these two are not. Now they're rotated correctly. So they're rotated right but they're, they just have to be flip-flopped. All the rest of the puzzle is solved, I would assume. I even put the corners in, this, in a, as similar confirmation as I could as, as his, but these two have to be flipped, but how can that be? You can't have two um, edges that are flipped without flipping the other two edges. You can't have two in and two out. Now, if these are upside down, you could have it, but they're not upside down because they can be flipped and rotated. So the question is, how did this happen? Where did this occur? This would be just like in a, uh, a Rubik's Cube. If you're to see these two are in, then you've got this one and this one. These guys need to be rotated. So that would be that same configuration. Well, we talked about in the case of the case cube, the notion of rotational equivocation. This is a little different. 
So how could this happen? Well, obviously this is a problem with seeming edge parity, but there shouldn't be any parity with this puzzle. Difficulty, but no parity. So we look at the edges. Now, rotational edge parity manifested as a conserved rotational issue with another one of the edges. So this edge was rotated wrong, because this edge was rotated wrong. This is another kind of an edge equivocation called translational equivalency. Rotational equivalency is when you rotate one piece and it looks the same uh, 180 degrees from where, where it was. Translational equivalence is if you have another piece, another edge, that looks just like the edge that you have, and you put that one in place instead of the correct one. So it looked like it was fine. So actually what happened is that this case is not what you think it is. This case is uh, like this. This piece is in here thinking that this is the right piece. These two pieces you can see in a Rubik's Cube are different. They're completely different. But in a ghost cube and in other types of mods, you may have two edge pieces that look exactly alike. So you can translate one for the other and it looks the same. It has what I would call translational equivalence as opposed to rotational equivalence. So it's not rotating it 90 de uh, 180 degrees that makes it look the same. It's substituting one piece for another. So that's what you have. So when you get a situation like this where two appear to need to be swapped, whereas to uh, another set of two don't, look for another piece that looks just like an... Uh, Look for an edge that looks just like an edge up here and can be substituted. And the problem with this ghost cube is you have exactly that. You do have equivalency. So see this over here? Well, it looks just like this piece. Not only does it look like this piece, although this seems to fit, if you were to move this in place here and double turn it here, well actually we'll, we'll do it this way. If you take this piece, put it down here, you see it also fits. So you had no way of knowing it. So this seems to fit. And this seems to fit. But if you put the wrong piece in, you'll end up with this situation. You have, I guess, maybe a 50% chance of getting the situation or not, but if you do get that situation, you accidentally put this wrong piece in on the bottom here when it's supposed to be this. So you're gonna end up with this. Because you swapped, you in essence swapped these two pieces, you also ended up swapping these two pieces. So that's why that swap occurred and that's what happened. So when you get a situation like this, look for translational equivalence or look for one edge piece that looks just like another edge piece and that's what you did. It's not because of rotational. If it's rotational equivalence, then you'll have one piece rotated wrong. If it's translational equivalence where you substitute one for another, then you'll see you'll have what appears to be an impossible swap. So to get this back, well, I'm going to do my sliding U technique, so to speak. So I'm going to do a 2M move like this to put in place. Swing my up to a L position, do a 2L. Swing my up back to my M position here, do a 2M, meaning middle. Swing this back over here and move this in. Now in so doing, I put this in just fine. And now we find ourselves in a situation where it looks just fine. There's absolutely no issues. We can do corner swaps to get this, or edge swaps to get this where we want it to be. I'm gonna put this over here, 2R, 2U, 2R, 2U, 2R, 2U. And once more, set this up so that these two can be swapped, which will swap these two back. To our U, to our U, to our to you, to our to you, to our U, to our UI, to our. And that should get that back. So, so too with this, I'm going to do exactly the same thing. What I'm going to do is on the layer that's already in, so that I don't break that and I don't have to start from scratch, I'm pretty much going to do that. I'm going to take this, slide it into here. So I'm going to do a 2R. I, I, did, I actually did a 2M before, it doesn't really matter. But just move this into position here with a 2R. Slide this over here to an M position. Do a 2M to get it out of the way. Now just get back what you, what you just did. So I'm going to swing the up back to my R position. Do a 2R again. Swing it back to my M position and do a 2M. When I do that, everything is fine here. I just substituted this. Now we take a look back at what we have here, and you should find that it'll work, it'll work just fine. Okay, so we see that this is in. Now you can already tell that this is gonna be right because this is not in, this is not in, this is not in, but this is in. Now I'm not gonna do corner swaps or edge swaps this time because if I do that, it's gonna rotate the center, it'll be a little confusing. So I'm just gonna do it like I would do the normal uh, last layer. But anyway, uh, you can see that the apparent parity, which is actually um, translational equivalency, causing false equivocation is finished. So I'm gonna hold this here and um, rotate these edges around. R, U, R, I, U, R, 2, U, 
all right and that's all it took everything is back in then it's just a matter of solving your corners um, to solve that we'll say that this is right this needs to come here u r u i l i u r i u i l this is correct which means that this is not correct I wasn't sure which triangle did what but you can't have one uh, you can't have two in so u r u i l i u r i u i l all right one more turn 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 and turn all right so this is in this is in these guys are actually in they just need to be r i d i r d into submission so exactly the same technique notice there's no changes in any of the algorithms of any of these questions it's just a question of perspective and i like these two questions because they're both um, all different forms of different types of equivocations, rotational and translation. Well, here's another quick ghost cube uh, question that I have. This is from Ethan, and Ethan um, says, I'm stuck on these last two pieces. Can you please help? And what I did is I tried to put it in exactly the configuration that he had. These two uh, corner pieces, the, these wing pieces, are on, are just sort of poking out like that. Well, Ethan, you're so close. All you've got to do is recognize that they're in this in the right place, so they're permuted correctly. They're just not oriented correctly. All you have to do is R I D I R D it until you uh, get it in, into position. So once you know that these are right and they have to be because these are correct, just do R I D I R. D, R, I, D, I, R, D. Keep doing that until it's in. And have faith based on the law of cubes. R, D, D. Okay, so that's in. Simply move this into configuration. One more R, I, D, A, R, D should do it because you do a total of intervals of uh, three to get it back to the base solve and splat. So that's it. All right, so you were so close, that's all it takes. Just keep following, following suit with that. So it's amazing how you take one puzzle, turn it into this or this, take an edge and make it so that it can be uh, rotated in equivalent way. It'll put this edge up. Take two, well, where are they now? Take two, um, uh, take two edges and make them equivalent. If that happens, you're gonna appear to have an impossible flip that has to happen. Anyway, hope that answered your questions. Keep those questions coming, and thanks for watching.